Okay, let's continue the adventure, shall we? <clears throat> We're going to travel up north here and uh, see if we can find that ring uh, in honor of Zar. To be honest, I don't think I miss him much. <laughs> Uh, I never really was a big fan of Montron and Zara. They're always a little too crazy for me. And, uh, just evil. I guess I'm not a big... I'm kind of turned off by evil. I'm kind of turned off by lawful good at the same time. But you just... You don't see that many lawful good characters, it seems like. Uh, I know in this game you can meet a Jantus, who is a lawful good paladin. But he might, uh, he might be one of the only ones I can think of. Um, Jahir is true neutral, neutral good, neutral good, and then I'm chaotic neutral, so. But anyway, let's get, uh, get this fight going with these goblins here. Or hobgoblins, rather. And, as predicted, um, like I said, anything with about 100 EXP, worth worth about 100 EXP or less, is going to give you just absolutely no trouble with uh, splint, mail, or full plate, and shields. Um, they're just not going to be able to hit you uh, enough to make it um, dangerous. Did we grab, uh, yeah? It looks like about it here. Let's go ahead and switch, switch this with Imowen. Because it's the heartless way of Baldur's Gate, but if he's a party member, you aren't going to keep him. You might as well just take this stuff. Uh, a little heartless, but uh, this is the way it goes, I guess. I think what's nice about the the Baldur's Gate 2 is you can watch the map. You can watch the map while your characters move. And uh, that was one thing I didn't like about Baldur's Gate 1. Was I was, you know, you, you switch over to your map, but you, they're moving. They're just standing still. And, and honestly, it, it wasn't really that big of a deal. It was just something I really liked about Baldur's Gate 2. Because, you know, I can just sit here, look at the overworld. I don't have to be constantly scrolling. Um... So I, th I always thought that was something nice that they added. One thing I don't like is that it always pauses on the inventory screen now, so I guess you give up one and to get another. And let us just go ahead and talk to Joya here. Complete our quest. Load. Please load. As you yes. And you get a whopping 400 experience points and an increased reputation. And also, she's left the room, which means we are free to steal from it as much as we want, regardless of whether it's locked or not. Picklock failed. Picklock succeeded. I do like that, um, similar to Baldur's Gate 1, they included the, uh, the way that you get experience points for picking locks and you get experience points for learning spells. I thought that was a really cool addition to Baldur's Gate 2, even though I didn't like it. Uh, like, like Baldur's, 2, Baldur's Gate 2 as well. That's the first one. I didn't feel like it was as open ended, uh, really. But, um, we're going to leave leave the friendly arm in now. It's not, not anything for us to do, but uh, progress with the game. And uh, we'll try and do that um, down at Nashgale by going straight to the mines uh, with very, uh, well, with no more adventuring in between. I want to know who colored all the, the map, though. If you notice, uh, the entire map now is uh, colored in. And I don't know if they took that from a concept art from Baldur's Gate, or some some fan actually did that. I'm actually curious about that. 
because uh, I think it just looks awesome. So we'll continue south here along the way. Unless the random generator wants to uh, kick me in the balls, nothing, uh, nothing terrible should happen on our path down here. Whoa! Except for six giverlings. Oh wow! Oh wow! Okay. We got jumps here. This is why you want the sleeping spell. Sleeping smell spell will, will work wonders in a situation like this. It'll turn an unmanageable fight into a manageable one. So look at that. Now all those guys up there are asleep. We're free to just focus on uh, the ones who are awake. And... We will uh, get the ones who are asleep in just a minute. When a monster is asleep, whatever attacks it will wake it up upon the first successful hit. But you're guaranteed to hit. Whoever attacks it is guaranteed to hit for max damage. So that's just a little bit of the rule rule information there. Wait a minute, was that... Did, did he get hit and not wake up? No, oh, he woke up. Okay, I don't know. Maybe they have to roll to see if they can wake up, but I'm pretty sure they wake up pretty much instantaneously. So, that was fun. See, that's why the random generator makes the game fun, uh, and it keeps you on your toes. Um, because of the way it, uh, you're not, you're never, well, you'll not, you'll never play it the same way twice. Uh, even more now. Um, and I think we're just going to take a snooze. Get that sleeping spell back in case we find ourselves in a situation like that again. But now you can see, um, I honestly think this, you know, sleep is the best uh, spell you're going to want for a level 1 wizard. Uh, I see a lot of people... Whoa, bandits. Okay. But I see a lot of people jumping straight to magic missile or chromatic orb or um you know something that just does damage and i don't i don't think that works uh that doesn't work at all because you can only use that once so you shoot out a missile that does what 2d4 magic missile does 2d4 so you're gonna do a 2d4 attack once that that is guaranteed to hit but then you're useless, except for your sling, which you aren't known for really being that great with anyway, as a wizard. And, um, and I mean, honestly, it's just, uh, an arrow will do 1d4. Uh, I th I'm pretty sure at least 1d4, if not 1d6. Let me check on that. Yeah, 1d6. A regular just shot arrow does 1d6. So, in the beginning of the game, why even bother trying to use magic missile. I know there's a fourth bandit that I didn't know oh, there he is. I was gonna say that I didn't pickpocket, but and uh oh man. This is madness. This is like Sparta. Let's see if we can do this one without wasting our sleep spell. I think we can handle it. Oh, wow. Montreon is not in a good spot. Let's get him out of there. Look at my cat go! Go, little beast cat! Yes! Oh, I'm sorry. I'm never gonna be... I'm never gonna be able to say enough about that. Wow, why won't that Giverling die? Okay. Okay. There we go. Something also, a quick note before we uh, switch to uh, another episode, is uh, diseased giverlings will not drop any gold, whereas regular giverlings will. And actually, if you notice, they're dropping, all well, you probably can't tell, but they're dropping a lot more gold than normal, which is something that in Baldur's Gate 2 too, they made the, the regular monsters drop more gold. So, uh, when, we end, uh, when we come back, we will be continuing our adventure to Nashkel.